Hello and welcome to another episode of the A Little Advice Podcast, an advice-centered podcast for creatives. I am your host, Christine Little, and we have a really awesome guest for you today. She has been in JFL, Just for Laughs, which is like this huge festival that every comedian wants to go in. She's been on Criminal Minds, and she's a hilarious comedian. Please welcome Aisha Alpha. Hello, Aisha. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for having me. This is lovely. The set is gorgeous. Thank you. I call it my living room. <laughs> Wait, let me see your nails. Oh, do nice. Same? I thought did we, we did? had the same one time when we did a show before. And I we were like, so. this is how the sisters We had to just, we, again, are not related. I'm not bringing on guests that, that we, we know like. about. <laughs> we could be. We're both biracial, so, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Who knows? My dad could have got yeah. He didn't. Oh. He didn't Are your parents still together? Yeah. Oh, good. Mine are. Oh, well, so you think you're better than me? (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Okay. So you're like the alternate universe version. (laughs) Parents were staying together. My parents have been together forever, too, like since 1973. Wow. How did they meet? They met at university, and my dad was from Nigeria. My mom was from, like, a farm town. Like, it's the weirdest story of how people met. And they met and six months later got married. What? Yeah. Like well, you know, that, gives, that, that makes me feel good because it just shows it's like you never know. Your life could change in an instant. True. Depending on who you are. Although meet. my mom was 19. Oh, wow. And I was like, I can't, I mean, like, it's worked out perfectly for them. They're still together. They're in love. It's wonderful. But, like, when you think about marrying someone when you were 19 after six months, like, ooh. So yeah. Doozy. Today, that would be a disaster. Yeah. It was a different time. True. People were better yeah. back then. Right? Yeah. That's what I like to do. Uh, they needed more resources. <laughs> So you are a comedian mm-hmm. and writer of all Yeah, obviously. comedian, writer, actor, and then I host. You so host. like live and TV stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So how long have you been in the game? As I call it, this business. Um, I started in 2010. So oh, wow. like nine years. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. Like I used to be a professional soccer player. What? Yeah. No. That's what I did before. And then, like, traveled around the world, didn't know what I wanted to do, went back to Canada, tried all these different jobs, was, like, a wedding planner for a while. I'm a, like, I'm a certified life coach and, like, mental Me too. Training. Yeah, <laughs> I should have a whole thing just about yeah. doing life coaching. But, um, and then, yeah, I got into, like, acting and comedy, acting first and then comedy second, so. And you knew, like, this is, this is where I want to go. No, going. you know what's funny? I really wanted to act, and I really loved, like, it got into it because I loved Saturday Night Live. And mm-hmm. I was like, I want to be an actor, I want to do sketch comedy, it'd be so fun. And then I had an opportunity to try stand up, and I was like, I guess I'll try it one time. And then I did, and it was like, well, that was pretty cool. And I got offered another show. And then, like, I did like three shows in the first year. Mm-hmm. And then next year, I'm like, oh, I should try one of these open mics they talk about. <laughs> How quaint. And then I went, and then it was like a couple years in, so I was like, oh, you're that comedian. And I was like, am I? Oh, I guess oh. I have been doing stand up. Yeah. So that I kind of so backwards fall, fell into it. But now I'm like, oh, that's a big part. Of what I so do. as you were going along in your journey, what is like some of the best creative advice that you've gotten? The best piece of advice I got was I think I mean it was about um, stand up, and I was like terrified when I started doing mm-hmm. stand up, and I, but I loved being on stage, but it was like terrifying. Still to this day, I think like I don't know about everybody else, but I feel like an imposter a lot of the time where I'm like I'm not funny, my jokes aren't clever mm-hmm. enough, you know. Um, but someone said to me well, you're, you've, you're a funny person in real life. Like you make jokes and you want people to laugh. So if you go on stage and no one laughs, does that mean that you're not funny all of a sudden? Like nothing's changed. Mm. So just go on and have fun. And if no one laughs, then that's fine. And then when people laugh, just know that like, that's also fine. Like it's yeah. all the same stuff. So like don't get attached to it. It's not your identity. Yeah. And it made, cause before I was like, oh, I'm not funny. When we all go through this, we're like, should I be doing this? All the time. (laughs) It's like what makes a comedian a comedian. (laughs) But um, just to remember that just because if you go to a show and people don't laugh, it could be the exact same joke, the exact same Mm -hmm. people the next day, and they'll be, like, howling. Yeah. So you you can't base it. It's so fickle. You can't, like, base your self-esteem or your career goals just based on if people think you're funny on that one day. Um, But then I think also just, like, having a whole life, you know, Mm -hmm. that – it is such a fickle industry that if you don't do other things, like I'm not a person who goes up to five shows seven days a week. It's just, for me, that would like crush my spirit a yeah, little bit. And there are some comics that do that. And, and it works for them. And that's to that, great. But yeah, I only have so much energy. Yeah. And I need things to talk about. Like I'm like, I can't just yeah. talk about going on stage. I have to like, I don't know, 
experience. Like I was sitting in my car finishing my little snack before I came in and saw a real weird guy walk past. And I'm like, see, this is coming. Like, Welcome to me. I live your life and you see these things happen. And like, that's what I want to talk about. Can I ask you know. about the weird guy? Okay. He was wearing, he had on a pair of pants oh, and then good. he had on his shirt, but his belt was around his shirt and not in his pants. So it was like holding his shirt tight and his pants were falling down. And he had a big gulp cup that had nothing in it and he was walking like this. And I was like, is he what, walking his hand under his chin? Yeah, like, I was like, is he posed? Or did he like, is he holding his mouth shut? Like, what is happening? And he had great hair and a really dingy old hat. And I was like, Christine Little's house is right, right here? Okay, great, great. I'll just wait. <laughs> I'll just go inside. Yeah, my neighborhood has a character. But then there was a super hot guy who came up next door. Really? I wanted to be like, okay, wait, she's single. Oh, I know. Her. He's, I think, Oh, from over there? Yeah, I mean a dog. Oh yeah, yeah. He's married. He's Ugh. married to my neighbor. She's really great. But yeah, he's distracting. I was like, I literally had this thought. Where I'm like, is Christine single? Because I don't know if she knows his neighbor. But we need to connect. off limits. Okay, I can't. I, I try not to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, hi, hi, Steve. I can't even see you. I'm not. I'm not. I try not to talk to him. <laughs> look at him. Not gonna. Nope. <laughs> you're just really mean. You're like. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, so basically, the best advice you received is, hey, don't take anything too personal. Um, what about your worst advice? The worst advice? I mean, I think every woman who does any kind of entertainment or performance can, um, like, relate. The worst advice was to stop talking so much about my vagina. <laughs> So, and we all know, if there's anything, any way to describe me, it's a vagina comic. all I want to hear about. <laughs> I've never heard you talk about your No. I'm like, because of this advice. <laughs> <laughs> he, I this, say, this is from a guy, right? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I don't think any woman would ever tell another woman to not talk about her vagina. Um, no, I think, I don't know. I, I mention body parts in some jokes, but, like, I also mentioned dicks, and he had no issue with that. Yeah, I'm like, the, the penis part's fine, but yeah. the other one just... Yeah, we like to pretend and we're it scared of it, so we don't <laughs> like it. Um, and I, I said, why? He was like, no one wants to hear you talk about that. And then uh, I was like, well, you can go back to stuff. <laughs> and I still talk about whatever I want. Yeah, and, you know, it's fine. Right. So well, how, how far like, into your career was that? That was not long ago. That was like a few. Oh, years that was ago. recent. That was like a few years ago. See, that's good because. I feel like when you when it's early on and you, you're still trying to get the ropes and like you can take in a lot of what people say. Yeah. So which makes sense, right? Like you're yeah. trying to learn from everybody and then eventually you figure out what works for you and what doesn't and you like welcome people's good intentions and just pick out and pluck yeah. what works for you. Yeah, keep riding that rain. Yeah. So, um, can you think of any career setbacks that you've had and how you deal with those, like how you Hold on a second. This is a new segment. Check yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so <bad. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that in this industry, you always have to check yourself because mm -hmm. it's so like, you know, feast or famine for everything. Mm -hmm. And it's always a state of like, I'm never going to get work again. And I'm not funny. And it's horrible. And I'm like, am I, am I worthy? And then, I got work and they're paying so much money. This is the best. I'm the queen of the yeah. world. Um, and there's not like a lot of in between, it feels like. It's often those two things. Um, but I think, I mean, when you perform a lot, you get checked all the time. Because one yeah. day I'll be on this big stage doing something for TV, and literally sometimes the same night or the next day you go to a show and it's three people in someone's living room. So it's like, so humbling. What is my life about? You know? <laughs> um, but I had like I I'm gonna be doing the plan is to do an album uh, after the debut's born, mm -hmm. but I had tried to do an album. I did one. I performed a whole hour fifteen minutes in Canada oh, wow. a couple years ago, and the audio just got Shut screwed up. up. Yeah. So how did oh man? So we couldn't end up using it, and then how how did you? react to that I would have been so upset. it was frustrating I mean part of it was it was great because I had a, a two amazing live shows mm -hmm. and we had some like crude video of it so at least I could like remember it oh, good. but it was frustrating and also like nothing you can do yeah right like it's done it's done and dusted so um we just have to move on and I plan to do another one that had to be canceled so now this is like my third 
Your third go around. Go, and I wanted to get it done before I had the baby, and it just was like, there's just no time. No, you know? yeah. So, so you have a little, you have a little bun in the oven. I know. Uh-huh. I just noticed that you were. <laughs> you look great. You're I was one of those pregnant. Off me alcohol earlier. Yeah. You're one of those pregnant people where you don't know that you're pregnant from the back. I know. You turn around <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. When I'm sitting at a table, like I've, I've watched guys that come, and I think it's literally because like I'm like feeling comp- more confident yeah, now. You're but guys will walk past, yeah, and they like look at me and be like, hey, and they're like, ooh, like yeah. see the belly and walk away. I'm like, that's right. Keep moving. Yeah, I'm gonna do that as a deterrent when I don't feel like Tommy. I'm just gonna put on a pregnancy belly. Yeah, it does a lot. So postpartum depression is, mm-hmm. is a thing. I don't know if it runs in your family or. or what I mean, I don't really know. Where, you know, my I'm like my family doesn't talk about health issues and yeah. stuff at all. I don't know what runs in there at all. <laughs> but do you have a game plan for if that if that comes up? Have you done? I've been research? thinking about it a lot and. I mean, it's such a big, even just being pregnant is such a big transition yeah. for like your body and your hormones and mentally. And then being pregnant in this industry as a, I mean, obviously you have to be a woman, but like, <laughs> you know, your well, body. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, you could be, yeah, yeah, that's true actually. That's a good point. But your body, like work depends on what you look like. Yeah. So all those changes have just been making me sort of have some feelings about it mm-hmm. um and trying to figure out what the game plan is when there's really no way to anticipate yeah what's gonna happen um so yeah i'm like we have a doula as well who gave us a lot of oh. great questions about it um like what, what are the resources you're gonna use and mm-hmm. how are you gonna like look for signs of this or who can you talk to and i go to therapy now once a week and my therapist is awesome mm-hmm. and she was like you can just call me instead of coming in and like oh, all these nice. things yeah so it's been good. I mean, is that something that you've dealt with before? Just like any bouts of any regular depression? They, there's that, that cliche that comedians are depressed. Right. Like, do you, have you experienced that? I like, I'm generally a pretty positive person, but definitely there's been times. And I think it's for me too, when there's transition, it's sometimes overwhelming. And that makes me feel like I'll have like, I always describe it as like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I can like hold on. And then it's like, I just fall off a cliff for a few days yeah. and then I'm like, okay, now we're back on track, you know, but it, I don't have clinical depression, yeah. but I think about people who have to take medication or deal with that mm-hmm. all the time and how it's like, that would be debilitating. Like mm-hmm. you just, you don't feel like doing anything. you like, everything about life just changes. So I'm lucky that I've only had it in like certain parts of life and stuff. But do you do anything to bounce back when you do have those falling off the cliff moments? For me, a big thing is like going into nature. That was one thing I loved about being in LA. When I first got here, I had like a few days where I, my heart was racing and I couldn't figure out like what was going on. And I just stood outside my apartment apartment by a tree and just like I just allow nature to like enter my body. There's something to that. Yeah, they say even looking at pictures of nature really? is supposed to like help you. Yeah, it just calms you down. Yeah. it like it gives you something. I've hugged trees before. You're a tree hug. I really, literally, <laughs> am a tree hugger. But uh, yeah, for me, nature is a big thing, and like like going for a walk or a hike or exercise yeah. or something just like can shift it. Not that that you know gets rid of what, but what's it takes going you on, on, but it space. pulls me off of like. The downward the, the cliff that you're about to, that yeah. you just fell off of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to take a quick break from our sponsor, who happens to be myself. <laughs> Keep and it in the house. Integrity. Hey. Hey. You can put that on there for your baby. Look right. at this. <laughs> I want to put it on him. Well, there you go. Look at we that. All, oh my god, that looks really good. We gotta get a picture of this. This looks fantastic. It's cute. Yeah. Integra titties. So the the concept behind the Integra titties is that you know guys are visual creatures, and instead of them just checking you out when your boobs are out, they'll learn something about you. And it's <laughs> you have integrity. Integra titties. Integra titties. Integra. And speaking He's of Integra titties, we are gonna play a little game. Are you up for a game? Totally. I love games. Okay. This game is called. What is your integrity score? <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. And at the end of this, we're going to tally it up and see what your integrity score is. Okay. And uh, I just made this game up, so I'll figure it out. Okay. Question one. A booker produces a show you really want to be on. Mm-hmm. They, you can tell, is crushing on you. But they say the show is soups booked for the foreseeable future, do you flirt or like hint that they may have a chance with you to try and get booked? 
It's a great question. See, I, I mean, obviously now that's a big fat no. <laughs> Hey. Some guys are into the <laughs> That's true. I don't think I would flirt and say that they would have had a chance with me, but I would for sure still be friendly and be like, hey, keep me in mind for your show and like maybe message them or like, like what a great show that you put on that I would, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. But no, I don't want, I'm awkward enough when people try and get in my pants that yeah. I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to encourage like, it. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So question number two. Mm hmm you get pulled over by a dude cop, mm -hmm. which is a male cop. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case some people, I'm not talking about dude ranchers. <laughs> Do you cry to get out of the ticket? I 100% uh, would cry, not even to get out of it, just because I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I'm Canadian. This is like, I, of course, I feel horrible for whatever I did. So oh, not, no. not to get out of it, but yes. Just I would cry. cry. By the time he got to my door, I would be crying. I, I've gotten stopped one time for speeding, and I wasn't, I don't think I was speeding. I think that his thing was off, and I was crying by the time he got to my door. Oh my God. What, so what happened? I cried, and he just he stood there, and he was like, uh. I was like, I'm really sorry. What happened? What did I do? Like, I was already so upset. And then he was like, you were speeding. And I was like, I don't think, was I? Was Okay, you're probably right. And he's like, okay. And he gave me the ticket. And I said, do you have to give it to me? And he was like, this is like, I think he was like, this is the worst <laughs> version of trying to get out of the ticket possible. Like, you're not even doing like anything. You're doing it wrong. You have to sexy cry. Yes. And you're doing this ugly cry. We Super ugly cry. And then I just paid the ticket in too dark. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you can't even start because you're too dark. Yeah, and yeah, I'm crying. Like, it's <laughs> all over. Um, okay, yes. so that's a no. Yes, it's a very it's confusing a, answer. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, a guy you have no interest in. I mean, obviously not now. This doesn't apply. But <laughs> a guy you have no interest in offers to buy you a drink. Uh -huh. Okay, maybe a soda since you're, you know, with child. <laughs> you're you're broke. Do you take it or no? Yeah, I take it. And he's, that's like, I feel like this is like, oh wait, you have interest in him, or no, oh, he's, he has interest in you, but you're like, no, do you, do you take the drink? And I forgot I, to mention that part. I think that I would, whenever anyone offers me something, also this is the Nigerian in me, is like, yeah. I'm supposed to say no to a gift. Yeah. So my belief is, especially if it's something that you want, if someone's like, I want you to have this, then you have to say thank you. And then you do, you, you take it from there. Um... So I would, I would probably, real real talk, probably take it and then okay. be like, but I'm not interested. Wow. So you would say that? If I thought that that's what the whole transaction was. You know was what? You have such like a happy demeanor to you. If you said it, <laughs> you would like be like, oh, that was nice. But if I said it, it would sound like so mean. I'd like say But I'm not interested. Like, <laughs> I think it's because, like, I do have a certain, I get away with some stuff, I think, because I'm like. I'm just not. You got no, freckles. Yeah. Like you're smiling. But you have dimples too. So I, I have one. Like I always pose. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think honesty is the best way. Like just be honest because then maybe the person doesn't have to feel the shame of trying so hard. What if they take the no drink back? It's fine. <laughs> what are you going to do? I think I just became Nigerian. Just by the <laughs> or, or, <laughs> can I get a shot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do a shot and then you're done. You just, Thank you and you're over. You don't have to talk. You don't have to like interact. I like that. Be honest. That's, mm -hmm. That can be so hard. I'm yeah. like, drink or drink. Oh my guy, what's happening? I don't even drink that much. <laughs> Number four, you don't get what you want. Say like at a store, like so you have a coupon they won't honor, but you're like, you know, do you pull the pregnancy card? Ooh. I mean, you don't, you don't have it that long. I know. Do. Everyone's been like, pull pregnancy card as much as you can while you're pregnant. Have you? I haven't really been like, I'm pregnant, but sometimes I'll be like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, She's rubbing her belly. You know? And I'm like, oh gosh, you know? And I'll like make it obvious that I'm uncomfortable if I have to wait longer or something. Yeah. So I subtly like just push that into there and then oftentimes people feel bad and then I'll do it. I like that. Want. I like how you said push because that's, <laughs> that's another good way to get out of it. You're like, oh yeah, I, I hate to push you. Like I have to push this baby out of me. Yeah. But, like for like many hours and like labor, it's going to be so hard. But I mean, that's fine if I can't get yeah. that coupon on her. That's totally fine. <laughs> so, so yes. You're saying I think I would say yeah. Yes. I mean, there's maternity parking. Like you should have special privileges. You're doing a big job. I, and also, you can cut in the bathroom pretty easily. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you're like walking through it. Oh, it's a good I can't tell if it's pee or my water breath. <laughs> okay. Last question. Your agent or manager 
uh, tells you you would work a lot more if you were to cut your hair completely off. Do you do it? I have been waiting for an excuse to shave my head. Oh my god! So long. Okay, well, grow your hair long. Okay. Well, also long hair is pretty good. Here's the thing. Okay. If they were to say to me, like, um, you would work a lot if you straightened, like, relaxed your hair again, because mm -hmm. I used to, I would say, no way. Really? Yeah. Because I think that it's like, this this hair makes me feel more me. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to tell me to change my hair, it's like you're telling me to change myself. Wow. And I'm not so there's it. a period where you had your hair straight. For a long time. Me too. Yeah. Me too. But this is like easier. And I, at the end of the day, I'm lazy. I know. It's so much easier. People are like, oh, it must be so much work. I'm like, it's way less. Literally work. do nothing. Do nothing. To but it's, it's easy fine. when it's straight too. If you straighten it once, you go through the process and I just leave it like that for a while. See, mine, as soon as there's any humidity, yeah. <laughs> like, right like, here. All, like, not even just here, like the whole thing gets mm -hmm. curly. So, and it was so bad for my hair. I hated it when people would call me out too. Is your hair really curly? I'm like, shut up. This is my secret. <laughs> you know why? Because when you, you have such nice curls too, I think that straightening it, hairs. where people are like, why did you ever straighten it before? That's what people say to me now. Um, I don't know. It's just, I just use it as like another look option. Yeah, I like I to straighten my hair every once in a while. Yeah, like, but not. I used to like chemically relax it. I did that like, once. Yeah, it's horrible. Sorry, we're getting into hair talk. It's it's nice such a hard table. Hey, we're two curly-haired mixed girls. We don't get to talk often, right? All right. <laughs> so your integrity score, let's see. You got 10 here. I'm going to see. I'll give you a 515. I feel like I really threw off your mm -hmm. quiz because they were always like, uh, there was caveats to all of my answers. 25, 30. Uh, so you have a, a 40. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> how many this is out of. Can we calculate this? Please see. Let's see. 10, 20, 30, 35, 40 out of 50. So you got a 40 out of 50 in, in terms of integrity. That's 80%. That is it? Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to ask for it. So that's pretty good. I You've so. got integrity. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. I like this game. I'll play this yeah. again. Hey, guys. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Today's word of the day is motivation. Motivation is defined as the reason one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. Motivation, getting motivated. You know how I get motivated? Watching Beyonce's Homecoming on Netflix. If you're not motivated after watching that documentary, then I don't know what to tell you. I hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. Leave me a line on at a little advice podcast on Instagram. Let me know how you stay motivated. Back to the show. Like uh, okay, so before we, we close it out, I have a gift for you. And it's not another baby. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, not, I know that you want to be pregnant uh, more. First of all, uh, this is really cute. A unicorn. <laughs> There's a zero unicorn. That's awesome. Okay, and this is the... I, I kind of saw the last wow. person, but this is my um, affirmation. What does it say? People hating is a sign that I'm being noticed. Ooh. Oh, people hating me, like people yeah. haters. Yeah, yeah. I thought it meant like if I'm hating people, then it's like, like there you go. <laughs> you're on the right path. <laughs> I actually like that one. I like that a lot. I, like that. I found that when I did, when I looked at um, the Just for Last thing, Ooh. when I was on the Trevor Noah gala, I was super excited when they put out a clip of me, and then it was like great comments, and then like some big time hating comments, and I was like, at first I was like, oh my god, that's so horrible, and then I was like. I've made it! <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I have people who, like, hate my comedy. Because, That's well, great. they couldn't have done that. if You know, I want to ask you about that. Can I yes. segue a yeah. little bit into that? So, that Trevor Noah Gala, yes. that was, like, a big thing Huge. for your career, right? Huge, yeah. So, tell me about how hard it was to get to that point. Like, what the process is really like for maybe up-and-coming creatives, comedians, because so often we just see the end result. We don't see everything that it took to get up there. Right. Well, like... So getting to Just for Laughs is such a long... I mean, every comedian knows that it's like, that's like the biggest, you know, thing, the biggest festival where um, you want, you work so hard to get in it. It's different in the States versus in Canada, how you get into like the home drug versus the new faces. Mm -hmm. um, just a smaller group, but with wider spread out. So it's like a different... We don't have like the multiple levels to it like we right. do here. But I mean, my agents had to push hard for me to be seen for homegrown and to get into that... Um, and then, and then, but there was a process of getting an agent. Yeah, in the first place, I've been really lucky in that the agent when I was in Toronto, the agent I got um, 
I came in for some other reason to have them like look at my reel and suggest who I could send it out to because my friend was with them. Oh. And then they were like, oh, do you not have an agent? And they like snapped me up right away because I was like a new person. I had already had like lots of credits from where I'd moved from mm. in comedy and in hosting and in acting. So they were like, who who fresh meat, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was great. But then like convincing people to put you on the appropriate shows. Like I love Trevor Noah. I my dad works half the year in South Africa. I've been to South Africa multiple times, performed with all these, you know, performers yeah. from South Africa. So I feel like this affinity. I'm like, I want to be on that gala. I want to be on yeah. a place that like fits for me and stuff. Um, and you just have to like, like standing up for yourself and fighting for what you want and having your people fight for what you want and what makes sense is hard and never ending. Um, and then just even things like, you know, practicing my set for the show. When I did my rehearsal sh- like for the set for the show at Just for Laughs, it wasn't good. Oh. It didn't go well. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh like this is like the culmination of everything oh and like now. And then I just pulled it out on the day of and had like a killer set. But um, yeah, I think like specifically for something like Just for Laughs, I heard someone talking and they were like, yeah, no, I did a, I did like a showcase and I didn't get it. So I guess it's not for me. And I was like, whoa, like it's going to take a lot more effort than that yeah. and a lot more time and, some people might get it the first time. Some people might get it the tenth time. Like you yeah. just never know. But if it's something that you want, then you just have to like. And how many years in was this for you? Because you know, people, people, like I said, they just see like the end result. They mm-hmm. don't see like the years of you doing open mics and doing shows. And before that, the training has an act as an actor mm-hmm. because acting does give you a leg up I think with stand up because you're so you're already comfortable on stage yes right? totally so uh, the Trevor Noah gala was in 2018 so that was eight that was years great. after I started getting into entertainment stuff so yeah yeah it's a long time yeah thank yeah, you for being honest while. about that <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like a turn around one year in you know no shame on that like if that works that, yeah. that's what happens it's good for you yeah but yeah it works for a long time all right well we're gonna close this up um and before we do I want to thank another sponsor that we have yeah uh how to go oh, oh you sorry right. oh, so I don't mean to throw this on you how to go I feel weird Putting this in front of a pregnant person. Um, um, I love it. Because, you know, I mean, like, here's the thing. No shame in being a hoe. And you can be a pregnant hoe. You can be a married hoe. It's like you're you're owning the, the word again. You got, yeah. you got your... Let, let's read... I want to read what's in here because this bag is fantastic. You've got flip-flops, uh, plain black tee, black leggings, one size fits all. You've got sunglasses, a.k.a. hater blockers, which <laughs> means you're getting noticed, okay. right? Uh, velour jewelry pouch, a tote, makeup remover wipe, deodorant wipe, toothbrush and toothpaste, hair tight, headache relief, and lip balm. This is your hoe to go. Last night is nobody's business but your own. Let's keep it that way. Thank you. Look at Good. that. And it's so discreet. And it's cute. You know? You don't need a fan. Look at that. Hey. <laughs> you and can I just keep that in your trunk. Know. Exactly. For any you just time. keep it in your car. I've got, I've got them all lined up around every city I go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to go. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being a guest on yeah. the show. Thanks for having me on. Where can people find you? They can find me on all social media at Aisha Alpha. Mm-hmm. Alpha is spelled with an F, not a PH. Okay. Um, and then uh, on my website, AishaAlpha.com. All right, great. And you also run a monthly show in North Hollywood, the birthday show, which I did, which is very, very fun. So please check that out. And we are going to wrap this up. But if you want to hear more from Aisha and about her creative process and how she comes up with jokes, head on over to Patreon, be a subscriber, and you're going to hear more about that. And I'm going to give birth on Patreon as well. No big deal. But if you donate more, you will actually get to see her. We're going to induce a labor. (laughs) Amazing. And if you're not already, please uh, rate, subscribe, leave a review. It really helps us out. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at A Little Advice Podcast. Thank you. Get yours at hodago.com.